Hi, beautifuls. We're going to make a flying veil. And what I mean by that is our veil, when we're done, is going to look like it wants to fly away or fly off of our heads, but it's not. So we're going to add some wings to our veil, so to speak not literal wings, but I'll show you what I mean. I had a client who to come to me because she saw one of my veils, one of my flying veils, and she says, oh my goodness, it looks like the picture that um, she showed me a picture, her inspirational veil picture, which, take a look, let me show you now. That's a nice veil, right? So I absolutely love that veil because it was asymmetrical and it looked like it wanted to take flight, right? So similar to the veils I make that also look like they're flying, um, she said, I would, I would love for you to do a veil for me. Uh, she wanted me to just switch out the pins crystal pins that I had displayed and she wanted some metal combs instead. So we're going to fulfill that for her and I'm going to take you along my um, my veil, my flying veil process and let's get started. So we have, um, I've pre-cut my Swiss dotted veil uh, tool um, to 22 inches by 11. You might be saying, wow, that's a big piece of tool. Well, people have long extension eyelashes, right? They might need more room. Um, not everyone has the same shaped head. Um, some people have more hair. Um, they might be wearing a nice full hairstyle, up style, um, wearing glasses with them. So I rather may cut it where I have more room, where they have more room to play and adjust to their head and face than less. And plus, I need more space because we want it to look like it's flying our veil, the flying veil. So what I did prior to having you join me was I prepped it twice with some, um, this is the heavy finishing spray starch. Now it'll say ironing spray starch, but can I tell you, we are not going to iron, but we are going to put the blow dryer to it to dry it quickly. So I already did two coats. We're going to do a third. I'm just using some of my weights here to hold it down. In fact, let me spray it first. That's the better idea. Okay. And you can't spray too much. It's not going to uh, put a film on your veil. It's going to dry clear. Uh, nothing's going to be disturbed. What we're doing is we're just stiffening up our tool a bit. And now we're going to dry it.
I don't know if you timed me, but it really doesn't take long to dry. We just want it to be a little bit stiffer, okay? And there is, there are some tool, uh, there are tool out there, there's tool available that is stiffer, but the polka dot um, tool did not come stiff. So I can pretty much, it can stand up on its own. <laughs> and that's what I want because I want to be able to maneuver it once I have sealed the edges and added the comb and you'll see how we do that. So now I'm just going to gather each end and then once that's gathered then um, we're going to connect it to our comb. So we're basically going to fold this very neat and I'm just coming in and out with my folding I like doing this I don't know why but I do <laughs> I like gathering it this is one of my favorite parts of the veil making process this and putting it on my mannequin head and getting a a nice shape and honestly no two no two veils of mine are alike because you know each one just has its own its own energy its own personality and I like that and they're probably the not alike because I'm not a machine <laughs> I'm a human and each each creation I make is a little bit tiny bit different than the other so now that I have that gathered I'm pretty much going to tie it together uh, not tie it I'm sorry, stitch it together from one end to the other of this gathering. I don't know about you, but my needles have been taking a beating lately. Oh my goodness. I have needles that were meant to be straight and they're bent. <laughs> I'm like, ooh, this needle had a rough life. But the needles that work on my veils, this is a pretty simple task. It doesn't go through too much. You need to fold anything over while it's in your hand, I would say do so. Because for some reason, even though I've gathered it firmly and didn't let anything go, somehow you have some portions of the tool that will separate from uh, the gathering or the bunching that you did you're like hey how did this get out of my grip but it's tool so it's not firm fabric but you still have to pay attention to it so I like to kind of try to pull it apart a little bit make sure everything is in there I've went one direction from right to left now I'm gonna come back the other direction to secure it 
anything that's a little loose I'm just gonna tuck it and put my needle and thread through at the end here I'm putting this row of stitching on top of the other okay I believe I can close it now so I'm just gonna tie a knot or two uh, possibly two. So that's one. And now two. Awesome. Okay. Now we're going to cut the umbilical cord. <laughs> and look, it's already sitting by itself. <laughs> I haven't even closed the other end. All right. I just see a few stragglers over here. Okay. Okay, now I'm just going to, I'm going to use the same needle and thread, I have enough left over, I'm just going to reinforce the ends and make a triple knot down here. Okay. So now we're going to do our folding and gathering on this side. I like to start off really tiny. It gets bigger as we get to the other end. So I always like to see how the ends curl up. This one, I'm going to fold this direction. Hmm. Let me see something here. Yeah. Okay, so what it was when I came to the end, it was fold backwards, so I just had to come in here and make sure I refolded the ends so it would just lay nicely. So here we go, we're going to make 
This time I'm starting from the right, or I should say the left, working towards the right. I'm not a professionally trained sewer, but I tell you, any time I hand stitch something, you can't tell me. <laughs> you can't tell me I'm not Donna Cameron, okay? <laughs> I'm like, I am working on my next masterpiece. In my head, I am working on the next season's collection. <laughs> with my veils <sighs> okay so I can tell this fold and gather needs to some reinforcement so just coming in here working back to the left Or it could be your right, depending on how you're watching this. Whenever it's hard to get it through, it's because there's already some thread there that I'm pushing up against. Okay. I think that does it. Let's just kind of try to shred it, see if anything comes up. This piece is a little loose, looser than I would like. So, let's see. Come on, get in there. I need you to get in formation. I'm just going to come through like that. Yes. Okay. Okay. So now we're going to tie... i just see this piece here. We're going to tie a, make a knot. Mm -hmm. oh, come on, that's right. Would you? Come on, you on TV. Act like you got some sense, please. Talking to my string. Okay, I think. Did we get it? Ah, oh, really? Really? Come on. Let me see. What can I do here? What is happening? Talk to me. Come and talk to me. Okay. Wow. I don't think I made this any better. Okay. We made one knot. That's going to have to work. And I think it will. You know why? I know it will. Because I still have to attach the comb. So I'm going to be putting my needle and thread in there, adjusting it to the comb. 
Yeah, so it's going to get even more reinforcement. So now, look at how she is sitting so pretty. Look at that. Can y'all see my little boat? Okay. So now, we are going to, we need to add some tool around the top of the comb so we have something to sew stitch to. Because if you just put string around this, it's not going to be as durable for the long haul. I'm using this pretty glitter tool. I will leave everything, all the links in the description. I've cut a thin piece just with a scissor. I didn't measure it, just cut a really nice long piece. I may or may not use it all because you know what I've learned? I've wrapped quite a few of these. You don't want to wrap too much because it's hard to get the needle through when you make when you make it too bulky. So I'm going to hold the tool here, come on top and count one, two, three, four, five, six. Now the next one. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One. Two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Yeah, I did not even use my all of what I cut. So now I am just going to. Just tie the end here. And I'm just going to tie it about three times. This is my second loop. And this is my third and last loop. There we go. Okay, so that's how it's going to look. Just enough. So that's one. Now we're going to do the other. Let me get my long piece. Okay. We counted six, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, Three, four, five, six. Hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. I'm going 
gonna make three knots here because we definitely don't want this unraveling. This is our anchor. This is what's gonna connect our veil to the to our head. One knot. Second knot. And this is the last. Okay. Okay. All right. So can you believe we're almost finished? These take out of all the things that I make, I don't know, this is up there in terms of needing the least amount. The least amount of uh, supplies. It's not a long list that's needed. So the combs I'm going to have facing inward. not going to have them facing outward. So, some do. I know I used to on some of my veils, but if it faces inward, it's so much better. So, if you notice, if I put it on top, it's going to look too bulky. So, we're going to put it underneath the comb and so I have to be very careful that I don't sew the sides of this veil because you can mess up the form of the veil the flow of the veil we don't want that okay Yeah. Have my needle and thread ready. This isn't wasn't the needle I was talking about that bends because this is a naturally curved needle. This needle, I'm talking about this needle. This needle used to be straight. <laughs> now <laughs> Oh, it looks like a bent, broken golf club. Okay. But there's something in me. I can't throw them away either. Okay, so I flipped it on the underside so I can connect and do what I got to do here. Okay. Let's see. Okay, Houston, we have made contact with our first stitch. Just making sure I'm grabbing some of the veil and going through the teeth of the comb on each side. Be careful because it can do what it wants to do in terms of when you pull it. I need it to be a clean stitch. There we go. Okay. Awesome. Okay, we're on this side. Are we? Huh, hard to tell. 
I think I'm on this side. Yeah. Okay, I think. Okay. Now we're going to go through another section. Hmm. Oh. Okay. just have to make sure it's connecting with the tool on the comb and through the other side. You want to feel some, uh, what's the word I'm looking for when you're doing this? You want to feel a little resistance because then you know you're working through both materials because if it goes through too easy maybe it's not connecting to the comb so you have to make sure yeah not bad not bad it's working Okay, getting through the comb, now I need to make sure connecting to the meat of the veil where I did my gathering, fold and gathering, yeah, now, oh, that's a good one, <laughs> yes. Okay. See what I mean about when we were stitching and I wasn't able to lock this too many times before we added the comb. You're putting the stitching from the comb on this dotted veil through so many times that, yeah, definitely securing it. Yeah, be careful. Okay. Okay. All right. I feel like this is sturdy, very sturdy. And, you know, it's kind of bulky enough, but it looks the way it should on this side. I'm going to just cut that. Are you able to see it all? How it looks connected? Yeah, this is the side that's going to be seen. This is the underside. I'm going to tie a knot and do the other comb. I'm getting excited to get to the end here. 
Are you getting excited too? <laughs> I know, I can be so corny sometimes. I get it honestly from my sister. She's cornier than I am. <laughs> I love you, sis. I'm talking about my baby sister. She's going to watch this and go like, yeah, okay. <laughs> mm. I love my sisters. They're such good friends. They really are. I'm really fortunate to have not just one sister, but two. Two great sisters, you know? I told them we should have formed a group. <laughs> we would have broke up though. <laughs> Who would have wanted to go lead Hmm. Probably me. <laughs> I was like, I'm breaking away. I can't take this anymore. I'm out of here. And I'm taking the band with me. <laughs> and then I think my baby sister, she would have left too. The band. We are not singers. I am just joking. <laughs> uh, okay. So now I'm going to cut this as close as I can. I'm probably going to take a tiny scissor and cut a little bit closer. But I'm going to work on the other side now put this one up even though I probably could use it but I just want to make sure I don't run out of thread this one is the fattier side so I'm going to definitely have a lot of meat to work through with that one. Okay, let's see how this is done. Okay. So, yeah. lot to work through on this side. That's okay. We got this. We got this, baby. We got this, baby. All right. Let's see the first stitch. Let's see. Come under there, yeah. Okay. All right. First stitch. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. so I can see what I'm doing. to work through on that one. But you know what? We're 
doing it and doing it and doing it well. Okay. Now I'm gonna go on this side because when it's so thick, you're gathering, fold and gather, and you're trying to make sure that it works, it's attached well. You've got to see what you're doing. Come on. Come on. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Have you ever stitched and you pull all the way and the thread pops. Ooh. <laughs> when that happens, I'm like, then I put put it down and I'm like, I'll come back to you later. <laughs> that's like my tire. That's like driving and you get a flat. That's the comparison. I'm like, oh man. It just ruins my groove. Okay. Especially if I've been sewing on something for a while, you know. Okay. Come on, come on. Come on. It was in there and then came out. Come on. Yep. Now we're going to go through here, go through the meat, come on please, we're almost there guys, yes, 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 I am not too proud to beg my material to act right, okay. Now, okay, have to, okay, this has to go through the whole gathering, fold and gather. Turn this around and really okay. You can get through a little more there. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Sometimes if it won't go through the whole thing, just take it little by little and say, okay, we got through there. Where else can we get through? Okay. Yes. All right. Okay. I think I have about one more. And we're at the end of the comb. Okay. <clears throat> Okay. I think this is enough, guys. We come to the end. <clears throat> We 
one. Two. Three. Okay. So we made three knots there. <clears throat> and yeah. She is ready. She's ready. Yeah, she can't be any more ready than this. Just making sure. Yeah. I like her. I'm just gonna trim some of the excess tool here. Just cleaning up a little bit, just a little bit. Okay, you know what, I see a little loop there. You see that little loop there? Because I have a little string. Okay, so this is the fun part to me because now I get to try it on the mannequin head and see how it's going to look. <clears throat> and this is when we make our veil fly. So basically, I'm just going to tape and I see, what do I see? What do I see? I see a piece of string. Okay. So now we're going to take this and tape it. I'm just using duct tape. You can use any tape, depending on your mannequin head. down so you could see yeah so I'm actually going to lower the combs a little bit and depending on where you position it you can wear it over the face you can wear it above You can make it asymmetrical, right? But yeah, I do know that my client wanted it at the top to stand up, but you can stand it and not be so pointy. We can really do whatever we want so that it looks like it's flying or it looks windblown. Yes. What do you think of her, guys? Do you like her? 
I like her. I like you. I do. Yeah. So, using our inspiration to have our veil, make our flying veil. She does look like she's going to take off using our spray starch. And I'm actually gonna spray this again and let it air dry. So that would have been four coats because I wanna make sure when she gets it, she can manipulate it any way she likes. Yeah, our flying veil. Have fun, guys.